Welcome to the first episode of our video tutorial series, guiding you through the utilization of the Building Generator tool for Unreal Engine 5. In this first episode, we delve into the fundamental aspects and functionalities of the Building Generator. This blueprint-based actor seamlessly integrates with Unreal Engine, making it easy to assemble modular buildings with a few clicks. Generate hundreds of unique building variations instantly, saving time on manual asset placement. Let's begin by creating a new level for a fresh start. To ensure everything runs smoothly, it's essential to set up our project correctly. First, go to Project Settings and enable Virtual Texture Support to ensure all textures display accurately. Don't skip these initial steps, they're crucial to ensuring everything works properly. After enabling virtual texture support, you will be prompted to restart the editor. Make sure to do so to ensure that all changes take effect properly and the feature functions as expected. In the main project folder navigate to Blueprint folder within the Building Generator folder. Over there you will find Blueprint Actors BP underscore Building Generator. Drag and drop this blueprint into the editor to start working with it. In the Detail Settings menu, under the Building Generator section, you'll find several options that serve as the foundation for configuring your buildings. The first setting, Building Layout, allows you to choose from four main building shapes, a simple square, an L-shaped design, or a rectangular structure. By default, all buildings are generated with two floors, but you can easily enable or disable individual floors as needed. The building generator will automatically adjust the structure based on your selections. Additionally, the buildings come with a customizable sidewalk system integrated into the first floor foundation. If necessary, this feature can be turned off. To enhance realism, the generator also includes power line modules with a dynamic cable system, adding a distinctive and immersive touch to your scene. Now, let's take a closer look at each module's settings to understand the available options and their functions. For this demonstration, we'll disable all building structures except for the first floor. This will provide better clarity, allowing us to focus on the specific module we're editing. To do this, navigate to the first floor settings, where you'll find several sub-module options for customizing the first floor, including walls, windows, doors, shelters, corners, and air conditioning. Before diving into each module's settings, let's explore the custom facade material option. Enabling this setting overrides the default facade material of the first floor walls with your custom material, allowing for greater personalization of the building's exterior. Now, let's navigate to Wall Settings. In this section, you have overall control over all walls of the first floor. You can turn the module on or off as needed. The next available option is Show Mesh Numbers. This setting is crucial when editing separate meshes within each module settings. The Index Mesh Numbers will help you locate the specific mesh you want to edit. We will demonstrate this shortly, but before that, let's take a look at the Mesh Distribution setting. You have three options for Mesh Distribution such as Custom, Random, and Single. If you select Single Distribution, all walls on the floor will be populated with the same Mesh variation, which can be chosen from a default preset array available in your project. By adjusting the Single Type parameter, you can switch between different meshes loaded in the mesh array. These mesh presets are located in the project's mesh folder within the wall modules folder. If you open the detail static mesh settings, you'll see that each module has sockets that act as distribution locators. Each mesh has a specific set of sockets, ensuring that particular mesh variations appear in designated locations. This system allows for unique designs through various combinations of these settings. If you set random mesh distribution, walls will be randomly assigned different meshes with each blueprint update, parameter change, or whenever you move the building actor. 
Custom mesh distribution is actually sequential mesh distribution. It arranges meshes in a specific order set in the mesh array. This method is specifically designed for advanced building customization. For instance, let's take wall number 2 and edit its transform parameters. By enabling local transforms and entering the wall index number, you can adjust its location, rotation, or scale. You can add as many elements as you like into the transform array to modify any selected wall element. Now, let's move on to the next setting, Global Material Override. This parameter allows you to override the materials of all module elements at once. However, if you want to change the material for only a specific wall element, it's best to do so directly in the Static Mesh Detail panel. The next setting is the Enable Delete parameter, which is useful if you need to remove any element from the mesh distribution. Simply enable the delete parameter and add an array element with the specific mesh index number you want to remove. The last parameters, enable shadows, enable collisions, and culling distance, are designed for performance optimization. Enable shadows allows you to selectively enable or disable shadows for a specific module. Enable collisions lets you turn off collisions for specific module meshes. Culling distance sets the distance at which the mesh will begin to be culled from the camera view. These settings help optimize performance, especially in large or complex environments. All building modules have similar editing settings, making the building design process easy and straightforward. Now, let's demonstrate how you can create a unique building look using this approach. For instance, we can modify the mesh distribution to enhance the appearance of the windows. Additionally, over here, we have a door, and we want to open it. To do this, let's enable show mesh numbers so we can identify the correct door mesh. Once we have the correct index, we enable local transforms and set the rotation to 90 degrees or 45 degrees, depending on the desired opening angle. Now, our door is open. As mentioned earlier, each modular mesh has a specific set of sockets for mesh distribution. If you select a mesh that does not have sockets for doors or windows but includes sockets for air conditioning, then only that module will be distributed among the walls. These distribution sockets can be added or removed from meshes as needed. We will explore this topic further in upcoming episodes dedicated to advanced customization of the building generator. By continuing to edit each building module, you can create a unique building look that perfectly suits your needs. We encourage you to experiment with these settings to explore the full range of possibilities offered by the building generator. Additionally, we recommend watching all episodes of this tutorial series, where we will explore other implemented modules, such as the Powerline system and Lighting Module system, as well as PCG integration, which will enable you to build entire streets or towns in minutes. Thank you for watching the first episode video tutorial on the basic features of the Building Generator tool. If you're seeking to elevate your environment and create stunning scenes, the building generator for Unreal Engine is an indispensable tool. You can find it on the Fab Marketplace, and the link is available in the video description. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to render your tail with us.